as always, by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Spahnauer and Theo Ash. And welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot, presented by our good friend over at Little Caesars Pizza, where Stay Hot, they're staying ready with some hot and ready pizza for you all NFL season long. And we're here to talk about some NFL football. You know, the uh, kind of game of the year happened last week. We saw the Eagles versus 49ers, but it was not the game that we thought it would be. So we thought we would take this opportunity to kind of recalibrate our power rankings and go over our top 10 teams currently in the NFL. But before we get into that, Matt, Theo, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing well. I think that this was a fun exercise to try to pick the 10 best. I I feel like there's a tier one and then there's kind of a big mess after that and I I don't even know if it's quite a a tier two even when you look at the in my opinion some of the top teams in the league and Mm -hmm. then there's kind of that big gap and then you get a big grouping of teams that are performing I think extremely similarly right now and I think that's fair my my strategy was to try and just pick the teams that were the I went kind of in order of who had the fewest holes or just like who had the least weaknesses or like glaring weaknesses, I guess, because everyone has weaknesses, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of did the same thing. I, I glanced at the rosters and tried to, you know, see who had just the most good players. That was kind of my first <laughs> exercise. I, I think that that's a strong way to judge teams. Probably something I should have taken into account more when I was doing my preseason record predictions and power rankings is like, Oh, day bowl and, and, you know, Belichick, they'll find a way. And then they, (laughs) then they didn't. Um, so I, I figured like for this one, I'm just going to go through these rosters and see what, who I just think has the most talent and then took a look at the results and try to find a, a balance between the two. I feel you. Um, I have COVID, so that's how I'm doing. Oh, oh that's interesting. You've been, you've been through it. It's just ridiculous, man. You can't stay healthy. I don't. Have you had like, it the I whole time, or healthy. did you just get it? I just got it. Oh, so this like is today? a new ailment. Like yesterday. Damn. It's you and my girlfriend going head to head for <laughs> sickest person alive this fall. She's got no hope. I don't know. <laughs> Mad you and her have been putting up. Series. It's a much more interesting battle than like NFL MVP. These are two special seasons that you and her <laughs> are putting up this fall in terms of contracting well, different illnesses. Anybody can get really sick, but the number of ways that I've gotten really sick and how condensed it's been, I can't. I don't think I've ever gotten sick twice. Like in a three month period, probably. I don't. That is. I've been the... sick three times separately in like the last month. It's crazy, but right side. Glad I have it now. Not in like fifteen days. That would really suck. Miss Christmas. Fifteen that days. Would suck. Right, that's so Christmas. you got to keep a little perspective. And I, I feel fine. I mean, I, I it's like a cold. Matt's got I had the it, deepest so. bag in terms of illnesses. I don't know. We need to get yeah. you and, and Cami on the schedule and you guys can go <laughs> band for band on illnesses <laughs> contracted. That's what it would be. That's what it would be. Um, and I talk to you every day and I talk to her every day, but I, I don't get sick. So well, I, my, <laughs> my, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I've been a Right, yeah, you're so man. strong and you're so Theo, brave. Theo and I and... are going to go to bat for strongest immune system. And Matt and you, Kimmy yeah, are going to go me. to bat for <laughs> weakest immune system. You I can can't imagine it. you sick, Bladen, or like sad. I, I get like, <laughs> I'll get like really bad headaches or I'll get a migraine every now and then. You do, you but, do have the migraines. But outside of that, like, I don't know. I feel like the last time I threw Same guy up every was, day. last time I threw up was that time we were in vegas <laughs> so <laughs> and that wasn't a that wasn't quite a that sickness wasn't either. quite quite a sickness um <laughs> though maybe yeah, that one had nothing would to say do with we your were immune system uh but i want to get into some football uh, <laughs> the infamous shack's pool party <laughs> the incident shack's 
2022. Was that 2022 or was that 2021? That uh, that must have been 2022. Was the it was the no, yeah, because I was 20, yeah, I was 21 at that time. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't have been 2021. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if we want to talk about some football, we're looking over again our top 10 teams in the NFL currently. We each put together a list, and then we did a consensus bring bring all three lists together and just um, if anyone's familiar with like board account. Theo, I, I just because I I saw you did. I assume that's what you did. Yeah, I just did ten points for first place, nine yeah, for second, account. and yeah, just added up our three yeah. scores to create the consensus top ten, which yep. I don't think should be too controversial. But I guess probably we'll see. not. I mean, we all had the same ten teams. Just in we had the some, same ten teams in a slightly different order. I I looked and I was like, I feel like. There's got to be a team I'm missing, especially considering like we all have Jacksonville on here at number, and that'll be the first thing we talk about is Jacksonville at, at consensus number ten. Um, and I thought about trying to leave them off because they don't have Trevor Lawrence right now, and it's not entirely clear how long he's gonna be out. But I really am struggling to find a team to replace them with. Um. Maybe Seattle was the team that I thought yeah. about that I didn't put on, there are, but there are I, a couple, I don't really believe in them. There are a couple. Minnesota, I think, is an honorable mention still, um, even though Dobbs mm-hmm. has been atrocious these last couple of weeks. You know, Justin Jefferson is coming back, and they've got Addison, and their line is playing pretty well, and I think Kevin O'Connell is doing a good job. Um, Flores' defense is, is, is still a tough one to solve. I think if... Tobbs isn't trolling say you know we're in the playoffs and you know with Jefferson coming back soon they could find themselves in the top 10 so I thought about them I thought about the Packers and the Rams were in that yeah the Packers the Packers Seattle. are interesting because they've been playing really well recently but I need to I don't guess I just need more volume and maybe that's like an, a cop out because they have been playing well but and they're still yeah. I don't know. They're still the like Packers were a six. team I I thought about, and I put the Jacks I put Jacksonville ahead of them just because I I feel like they're a bit more of a a sure thing and ready now. Um, if we're talking about the difference from eleven to ten, Jacksonville has more pieces that you need, but I I do think that their ceiling is pretty limited this year. Um, they've got the quarterback, they've got the receivers, they've got the edge rusher, they've got the corner. Um, but th- I think there's just a lack of physicality in their offense. And when they you know, need to keep the ball yeah. on the ground, they can't quite do it. And Lawrence is banged up. So they're at 10 because I think they're more talented. But in terms of who I believe in to get hot at the end, I don't know. I, I, I think Jacksonville probably isn't going to be on that list. What do you, what do you guys think? At the end of the, at yeah, the, end I, of the year? It's... Like, what, what, do you think Jacksonville has... I, when you rank them at 10, is it because you think they're above 10 and Trevor's injury is just what's keeping them lower right now? Or do you think, like, as a team, they're, you know, just 10 I mean, all it's, the time? It, it's weird because, like, if we're talking about this ge- if we're talking about the Jaguars coming out of the Cincinnati game where Trevor doesn't get hurt, they probably win that. And the conversation is probably a little bit different considering they would have the one seed in the AFC. Um, but I do think the Trevor injury, you have to take into account it, you know, to some extent. So I, I, I don't know. It, it, I think if they had Trevor, they would be higher, but I don't know how much. I just don't think they're a complete team whatsoever. I, I agree. I, I don't believe in the, the run game at all. They're so limited on that side of the ball offensively. And then, they're, yeah, they're not a particularly physical defensive team either. Um, I kind of ranked them based off of, like, assuming they're going to get Trevor Lawrence back okay. before the playoffs and assuming that they were still going to make the playoffs. I didn't really expect them to hold on to their one seed. I guess they could. I guess they could have because uh, schedules and whatnot. But um, they just haven't looked. The idea was that their offense was going to come out and be like world class, you know, get Trevor Lawrence in the MVP conversation. Right. And that hasn't really happened this year. 
um like the ridley edition has not been as good as it was supposed to be and they've got pieces they've got a quarterback and a lot of guys who can make plays and get themselves open you know etn and ingram and kirk and ridley but well kirk's even they lack even 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 they lack physicality i feel like when it comes to you know yak like with the ball in their hands are they breaking tackles like contested catches ridley has never really been good at i i think about it all the time like what this team could look like with keon coleman or something like that because lawrence gives them so many type op, tight opportunity chances and these guys are good at separating but you know sometimes lawrence really wants to make throw of the year and will attempt something bonkers and actually put it in a decent spot but there have been games this year where like they there's been a bunch of missed touchdowns in that capacity. And just over this course of the year, it's like it's more of a separation quickness team than a team that is going to, in those 50-50 situations, get the win, I feel like. And mm. the other teams on the top 10, I feel like, have guys who, you know, they're not all just finesse, which is what I feel like the Jaguars are. And, yeah, their defense has been good. Um, they, they utilize a lot of zone blitzes, and it can be a tough one to solve. But uh, even even there, I feel like they got cooked the by talented. Cincinnati and Jake Browning, though. Browning did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have to take yeah, the Browning game into up. account. And Tyson Campbell hasn't really taken a leap into someone totally locked down. And, you know, he got <laughs> totally burned by Chase in the last yeah. game. And I don't know, this whole year I was a little bit disappointing after his charting numbers last year. Uh, at least and walker hasn't totally taken a leap yet either so josh allen has taken that leap and josh i think allen's schematically really yeah and i think schematically I, I like some of the things that they're doing to make it difficult on offenses but i i just feel like their ceiling isn't isn't super bowl and i i put them at eight ahead of team i think i had them ahead of houston and i had them ahead of who is he, the lions detroit well, but I don't it, feel like they can really climb too much higher than eight because I didn't take the Trevor yeah. injury into too much of account because he might be he might be playing next week, you know. But that's, yeah, they, he could play next later. week, but they also said he could miss like a couple of games. Right. We, I just didn't know, so yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna I, kind of treat it, is it like big. I forgot they're missing Christian Kirk. I didn't even take that into account, but Christian Kirk's their leading wide receiver, and he's now gonna he needs surgery now, so. Six to eight weeks, yeah, it's right. it's not good, it's not good. So I've I've got them in the low top ten, but yeah, with those with those injuries, maybe I should have them lower. Yeah, I don't know that it's hard. And, and if we want to move on to to Houston, I can see the vision having Jacksonville over Houston, but I mean, if we're talking about guys that are just like playing at a high level will anderson is probably playing at a higher level than most of the pass rushing units most of the guys in the pass rushing unit for jacksonville cj stroud's probably playing at a higher level than trevor right now as far as production again mm -hmm. like you said trevor likes to try and get those windows but they just can't always convert on them Houston just seems to be firing on a few more cylinders. A and Theo, I think you brought this up the last time we talked about Houston. They're able, they do like to run the ball. Like they're not, even though they're not great at it, <laughs> they like to keep the defense honest. I think that's the thing that's holding them back. Similarly to, to Jacksonville is like, I just don't know if I trust them to be a great running team right now, despite the fact that, they are primarily a team that likes to run the ball. Yeah. And I don't know, I guess Singletary has had some 100-yard games, but it, it feels like they're still kind of not at the, the peak of their powers. I, they did lose to Jacksonville. Um, I, yeah. And the defense, the, the secondary makes me a bit concerned. Stingley is, has had some really high-end plays these last couple mm -hmm. weeks, especially last week. But he's not necessarily locked down yet, I guess. Yeah, I think that he's a little bit more in his Trayvon Diggs 
Durand bland archetype where you can go at him and, and get some play big plays, but he's also made some incredible ones. So, you know, three picks in the last couple of weeks or four picks or whatever it's been, or picking the last three games, I think it is. Um, you know, maybe teams will have to stop targeting him, but him and Steven Nelson, you can beat him. Like Petrie hasn't really taken a leap this second year. The defensive line is good, but the linebackers are still a problem. Like the overall defense right now is not quite like D'Amico has done a good job there. I think it's better than last year, but it's, it's going to take a couple of years for that to really get going. And, and right now I think they can still be picked on. And then on the other side, Stroud has been really good, but they are primarily leaning on the running attack in these kind of early stages of his career. So together, I think they're, they're good. They're dangerous. They could figure things out towards the end. But as of right now, I've got them at 10. So Houston right now, they are 16th in rushing attempts, 24th in yards, 29th in yards per attempt on the ground. Mm-hmm. So it's just like... With one, with one of the higher running rates in the league. So their yeah. offense, like Stroud is leading, which is funny because Stroud is leading the league in total passing yards right now, which just shows you how efficient he's been every time he's dropped back and how many explosive plays that they've hit. But yeah, I, I, they're definitely ascending, but the defense and the overall, I don't don't know how to put it with the offense. You guys, they're still, they're still pretty young, Mm -hmm. you know, overall. And, I don't think there's any way to put it with the offense other than, yeah, they run the ball a lot. They're not particularly good at it. That's an aspect of your game that you you can't really go to. And when you go up against a lot of these tough playoff teams in the AFC, it's going to be even tougher, you know? Um, I mean, the number of, like, totally complete teams is really just one. Um, But there's other teams that have more position group problems or depth problems. Whereas with the Texans, it's like, okay, they're still young and they've got like an entire aspect of the offense problem or an entire aspect of the defense problem. It's a little bit different. Yeah. They're up and coming though. And it's like, I feel like any given game, maybe they'll just go to Stroud like a ton and they'll get away from the run and they'll say like, screw it. You know, we're not really supposed to be here yet. Not that they're not a good team, but like this is ahead of schedule for them, obviously. And then go and beat a team in the playoffs, but um, the the roster's just not fully built out. Yeah, they're definitely yeah. ahead of schedule. So, I, I, does anyone know where we had them in preseason? Not Projection. at number pretty, nine. Pretty low. <laughs> they're. Yeah, I should have said that before. They are the number nine team, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So Jacksonville ten, Houston nine. And then we have Buffalo at number eight. Even though I think their six defense is just a disaster. I think their defense is just a disaster now. Yeah. They lost too many guys. I have no faith in their corners. I think the safeties are, you know, getting there, man. It's It's been a long, long time. Von Miller is totally not himself. Milano being gone is a killer. Allen, any given game, can go and ball out. I think that offense is still pretty strong, all things considered. Its high end is really good. And Buffalo has a lot higher high end than maybe an average team at eight because of Josh Allen. Um, but as a complete unit, like I, I just don't quite believe in them with their injuries. And I, I've always been, a you know, I was high on Buffalo before the season. I guess I was medium high on them. But I, I, I don't think they can overcome it. They're just missing too many key guys. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Their their defense has really taken a hit. I think that a lot of the teams in the NFL are so mid right now that just having a guy like Josh Allen is enough to get you favored. And like I'd pick them probably to beat a lot of them. But in terms of that tier of contenders, they're you know two tiers below the Ravens, even though there might just be a couple spots below them on a on a power ranking, you know what I like yeah. the, the chasm almost doesn't do it justice, I think, because yeah, I, th- I think the season is pretty much over in Buffalo when you consider that the expectations are Super Bowl. But the offense and Josh Allen like cannot be 
underestimated, I think. I, I know that he's had the turnovers. I know that on prime time, everybody has come in and seen him turn it over and cost them games. But the Bills offense in general is fifth in yards per drive, fifth in points per drive. You know, it's, it's fourth in touchdowns scored per drive. Like yeah. they don't really punt the ball. They, they're they a really, really, really good offense well, this can, year. You, they don't punt the ball, but they do turn it over. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> yeah, they do turn it over. But again, like they're fifth in, they're a top five offense. And you look at like what they are, every time they possess the football, like they are taking it farther and scoring more points than every other team but four. So right and their drive success rate is fifth so no matter how it ends like they're having successful drives at you know 76 percent of the time like it's i think that's what that number means i'm looking at ftn what, what status it? it drive success rate it's on ftn fantasy it's 0.78 is what it says i'm not totally sure if that's percentage um but at drive any rate they're, they're fifth rate. and what do they what do they classify and, as drive success rate? Just like a drive that ends in points? I think a drive that like crosses midfield and ends like in <laughs> field goal range. Okay. I don't know if that's the exact terminology, but points and yards per drive is a metric that's easier to understand in their fifth. Yeah. So if you've got a top five offense and a and an elite quarterback. And you go into the season, and it's not like their defense has no pieces at all. Like they've got Ed Oliver, and the safeties aren't atrocious yet. And it hasn't been good, but you would think with their combination of offense and defense, they would have a better record than what they currently have. And I think in a power ranking, they're. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, their point differential is quite good. Oh, oh, I don't know. Well, they're here at eight know. at the list. Having... You guys agree with me. You can't, you can't be that pessimistic because you had them in the top 10. It's not like you had yeah. the Rams yeah. over I, look, them had, I think they've had some bad luck with one-score games. Like, I, I can I can get down with that. Um, I just think their defense is, is just not the same since that Jaguars game, really. Yeah, I think, I think at yep. least if they had Milano, I could see... I could have some faith in their defense, but without him, it's just a complete train wreck. Yeah. They, I'm not sure where it ranks, but I know it's bad. <laughs> it, it doesn't rank highly it, it, since, like, September. Uh, yeah, I bet. But I had them above... Make Little Caesars the official pizza sponsor of the NFL part of your game day. Order online during our Pizza Pizza pregame one hour before and three hours after NFL kickoffs plus all day Sunday. And get ready for some football and some fun. Choose your favorite Little Caesars pizza or pick the toppings you crave. Either way, you win. And speaking of winning, everyone scores with convenient delivery or our in-store pizza portal pickup. So grab some friends and enjoy a few slices during the game. The Lions which you guys did not because I think the Lions defense is even worse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. The Lions defense is pretty sad. Well, the Bills defense is pretty bad, man. I, I don't, I understand that that's true, but I think the Lions have, especially with Ali McNeil on IR now, it's getting near the bottom of like the entire league since september it's it's true for buffalo as well it is it is and then i guess it just goes like i don't know whose offense is better either these two are these two teams are pretty similar i i i, I agree i had them next to each other as well you did do you like josh allen as a creator more or do you like the lions dominant offensive line that's that's your decision mm-hmm. i also think the lions went out because they're sort of like in a very prime position to make the play. The Bills could miss the playoffs. There's no guarantee that they make it. I think that they will, but we don't have that many games left. We have, what, five? It's week 14. Yes. Yeah, man. I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's that much much longer that the Bills have to, you know, kind of, like, they might need to go four and one. Three and two could not cut it. Whereas with the Lions, it's like, okay, even if you lost out, you might still make it. Yeah, 
Yeah, the Lions are are essentially a, a cinch to make the the playoffs. But I think if the Bills were in the NFC North, it would be a very different schedule. Uh, very different. Well, it would be a different schedule, and it would be a different story. Maybe. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I th- I think part of putting the Lions well, higher is like you know we can Matt like yes you you trust the Lions offensive line and. You know, Goff's had a pretty solid year, but you also have to trust, like, the Ben Johnson play calling. Like, the Bills literally fired their offensive coordinator because they were turning the ball over too much. The NFC North right now has three playoff teams. Well, yeah. But the NFC, I mean, right, the NFC East was hypothetically very good, but the Bills have lost, you know, so many guys, and Miami's good, but the Jets have not been the team, obviously, we thought we were going to see, and the Patriots have been terrible. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. But the NFC North has also played the NFC South, and I think just in general, the environment is— That helps. <laughs> —is one where, <laughs> like, it would have, it was easier to, to make the playoffs, and— I don't know. They're Buffalo, right. They're right. Buffalo's strength of schedule is 462. The Lions is 458. They're right next to each other in a lot of stats. Going back to the per drive numbers, Detroit is 15th in yards allowed per drive. The Buffalo Bills are 14th on defense. Mm-hmm. And then on offense, it's the Lions at 4th in yards per drive and the Bills at 5th. So they're right next to each other on offense and defense in terms of what opponents are doing when they get the ball on average. So I think you could take or leave it. I just, I don't know. I, I lean Buffalo. Maybe it's just cause I've seen it before. Maybe it's, I just prioritize like that elite quarterback, but I, yeah, think I mean, very well, golf has made a super bowl and Josh Allen hasn't. Mm, so not a winner well, in my book, you know, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Again, I had them right next to each other. Yeah. It's close. But my big thing is I don't believe Buffalo's defense at this point is any better than the Lions. Yes, I agree with that. Um, I think that they're both pretty bad. But Detro- Detroit's, I feel like, is just more intrinsically bad. I feel like Buffalo, I almost give them a little bit of a pass because of all the injuries. Yeah, Buffalo's you, just You don't think Dan Campbell's bit, turned it around culturally? Well, I, I think Aaron Glenn, their defensive coordinator, is on the chopping block. I think that Detroit, you know, we talk about how they have Ben Johnson, but their offensive coordinator has been, you know, fired for the Bills. The the Lions defensive coordinator probably should be fired even more than Ken Dorsey was. I don't like the linebacker rotations that they have. I think in coverage in general, they often like don't know what they're doing. Um, their pass rush, just paths and blitzes. Like, there's just nothing special about what the Lions scheme up. It's like Sean McDermott, I think, is doing what he can. Um, Detroit's just a bit more sorry in general on the defensive side of the ball. And I don't know. I, I, I don't just know. don't I, like I watching like... their defense. Their defense to me is like a very, very, very tough watch in a way. Like, the Bills is. Like the results are about the same, but from a process standpoint, like I like the Bills. I think that's I think that's fair. I I do maybe. But I guess the results. I are, may prefer <laughs> how it gets there. the talent in Detroit over Buffalo currently. Like health, it's being pretty taken close to account. Like Brian Branch is a dog. I think I do think their corner room has good players but i don't you don't jerry like- jacobs and cam sutton is not like i would rather have probably the bills corner duo with rasul douglas and Rasool uh, Doug- is, is a long like starting Jackson right now or- <laughs> no, no he's, he's hurt he's not starting yeah i don't know ben he i don't believe he was anyway coughing baby versus coughing baby i say <laughs> what's what, what's what's the uh, next team the college football playoffs are set, so what could be a better holiday gift than getting someone tickets to see their favorite college football team play for the national title or a chance at the national title or maybe just in a New Year's Six bowl game or in any bowl game? It really couldn't get much better than that, and it really couldn't get much easier with game time because with game time, you can get the best prices on last-minute tickets for really any event. It doesn't necessarily have to be 
football or college football or any sport. It could be music. It could be comedy. It could be anything. I'm on the game time app right now. They've got Doja Cat. They've got um, all types of local bands, even not some that I haven't even heard of, but maybe I'll go see them because I can get cheap tickets at, you know, at any time, last minute deals. So make sure you head on over to gametime.co or use the game time app and use the code blading K to get, you know, you're already getting the best deal. And now you can use this code and get $20 off. It really doesn't get any better or easier. You can even see like pictures of where your seat's going to be. Game time really does have it all. They make it so easy and they give you the best prices. And if you use the code blade K, you can get $20 off your purchase. So head on over to gametime.co or use the game time app today. So the bills were at eight. The Lions are at seven. We're at seven. We talked about them. At six, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. I had them a little bit higher. I was the guy who had them high. Uh, Good defense and elite quarterback. They'll figure it out. I don't know Maybe. about the That's good defense case. aspect these days, unfortunately. I'm I'm a little lower on their defense maybe than you, especially after what the Packers did to them and watching that tape. It's... Well, was that their defense taking a step back or maybe the Packers just figuring stuff out? Well, a, usually get right games don't happen versus elite defenses is all I'll That's say. I, I think Bolton being out hurts them significantly. Uh, yes. On IR. And I think that he, he isn't out for the season. So maybe like once he comes back, they'll start figuring things out. But as of right now, like their linebackers are pretty bad. Chris Jones is really their only pass rusher. Like the safeties have been disappointing. And then outside of McDuffie, I would say that the corners haven't been great either. And it, it the defense has been at pretty like bad, like <laughs> success wise recently. It's I don't know. I, I think Bolton being out is a big deal. I don't think we can insult their linebackers too much without their best one not playing. And uh, they've, they have not fallen off to some great proportion. I don't think they had a bad game against the Packers, but they've ultimately so they are currently I mean, ranked 22nd in defensive EPA. You know, they just they just oh, held the, the Dolphins nine. to 14 not all that long ago. That's true. That's a great that's a great defense or a great offense they did Eagles do that got 21 on them i think but that's not bad the eagles are a good good yeah, offense. pull up the points per drive real quick what are we what are we looking at they're 22nd the, in defensive well, epa I'll tell you, since week nine i guess they did hold some that's good offenses you've got you've got the dolphins with 14 like you mentioned matt but even they're like they were in the red zone, and then there was the fumble that was like returned for a touchdown. I, I guess they they did do a good job on the on the passing offense, but even then, like they didn't stop anything on the ground in that game. It's just that the Dolphins didn't really want to do that. I don't know. I look at their players, and it's like I I, I, I like Chris, I like McDuffie, but there's no one else really on that defense that like is particularly moving to me currently well you got to judge it by a little bit more than the superstars i think they're pretty balanced all around they are balanced i just think that their depth is a little or their non-superstars have all been a little underwhelming right now like no one's quite having the career year that you'd hope and i, I think a lot of them played better last year like carloff just played I don't know. I, or Snead yeah, played better last year. I think that's certainly true. And I think the safeties certainly played better last year. Like Cook was legitimate positive down the stretch. Yeah, like, which, like what's the problem with Karloftis? He's not a good player. He's a fine player, but... I'd he's say, having a good year. They have like 40 sacks. I disagree their pass rush sucks. Maybe I'm taking what I saw against the Packers too, too much uh, into it. I, I, I think, I think, so. I think that's their my, biggest that's my problem opinion. is that they just don't have any good receivers. Look, the receivers yeah, I mean, suck. Yeah, the receivers I'll give you that. Terrible, that, that, man. But their passing offense is good despite it. I still am worried about, like, are the receivers going to go out there and blow a game yes. in the playoffs? But I, I think I could say that about a position group for any team 
for any 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 one of our contenders outside of maybe the two teams I have over them. And even then, I'm not confident with the two teams I have over them. I mean, outside of the receivers and the tackles are not great. Fair enough. They're pretty well built team. They ran the ball well against the Packers. That's what I want to see a little bit more of. Um, but I think ultimately what you can say about them and what you can't say about other teams is that despite all of what should make their passing offense bad, it's not. It's been a very good passing offense because of Patrick Mahomes. Whether or not he can mask that so much they win a Super Bowl, I don't know. But I still think it makes him one of the top contenders in the entire NFL. I agree, but I've got him at six and you had him at three. I just think when I look at some of the uh, the other teams around the league, especially the top four for me, and I don't think the Chiefs are, are quite tier one right now. It's like you have them over Miami, and I'm just not sure what aspect of Miami is. a. I, I just think they're the more balanced team right now. I, I, their offensive line. Their line is a problem, but so is the Chiefs. Like Their tackles are atrocious in Kansas City, I think, this year. Um, and their receivers are pretty bad. Like The Dolphins' offense is better than the Chiefs so far this year, even though one has two and the other has Mahomes. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I think Miami's defense has been better recently, I'll say that. Since they got Ramsey the, back? <laughs> yeah. Since they got Ramsey back, for sure. Miami's defense is, I think, coming around uh, from where they were yeah, in the, earlier that's, that's, in the season in, in a big way. And to me, that, that puts them over KC. I, I think that they are, at the moment, playing better football. But again, it's it has been pretty easy for the. The thing that the concerns Chiefs have me racked up most, more big wins than the than the Dolphins have. When, when I look at like Miami and Dallas and Philly and Baltimore and for, and the 49ers, those are the teams that I had ahead of Kansas City. All of those teams are going to be able to create explosives on offense, and I just don't think Kansas City really can do that. Like Kelsey hasn't been able to. Absolutely, they can. Not, not at the, not nearly at the same rate. CD, CD. It's been is, a struggle. Yeah, I mean, they don't have anyone that really scares you on. Well, the, the passing offense still good. Yeah, the passing offense is good. Miami, great. Their defense is. They don't better. have anyone. That can, they don't have anyone that can score a ninety-yard touchdown on you. <laughs> like, they have actually really struggled to push the ball down the field this year. Scoreboard. Um, they beat Miami. <laughs> They did beat Miami. Shout out Miami for beating nobody this year. Have they beaten a team with a winning record yet? I don't think that they have. I like them. I, I don't think that they have. I, I do think Miami is playing better right now, but when you look at Sydney Kansas on the City, Broncos, hang the banner. They beat Kansas City, beat Jacksonville, they beat Philadelphia, and they beat Miami, who are who is on our top ten list. And Miami hasn't. They've lost. To Philadelphia and KC. They also stuff. have the best quarterback in the NFL, man. They do. They do. It matters. The vibes are off in KC. I, that's all I know Vibe how to put it. Failed. It just doesn't quite. It just feels like the worst version of themselves, and maybe the worst version of the Chiefs is better than the best version of. And, some and other that's teams. and that's and that's why I think you guys have them lower. This is a bad Chiefs team. It's a good Miami team. And I think Miami, like, totally in a rematch could beat them. I don't want to be too negative about Miami. I know I'm talking shit. Uh, I really do, like, think they could go on a run in the AFC. It's, like, totally possible. Um, but I think it's this is a classic expectation who's beating it and who's failing to meet it. The expectation for Kansas City is that they win every single game. And if they don't, what happened, you know? That's true. You know, if, if Kansas City was sitting here right now, 9-3 and three with zero wins against winning teams and they had lost like their losses were to the Eagles and all them. And we'd be just as concerned. The receivers are really bad. And my, my stance is that it's going to cost them a game in the playoffs eventually, but passing offense as a whole has still been great. Cause you have Mahomes. when you drop back with Mahomes, it's still a, a great result. So I got him at three. Yeah, I, I can see it, but it, there are things that could cause, like, yeah, like you said, you feel like they, the wide receivers could cost them a game in the playoffs. It's just, they've been winning. Everything appears like on paper, maybe to be good, but just maybe, again, maybe I'm holding the Packers game with too much weight. It just, 
feels like it's not quite their year in the way it feels like maybe for the top four. I but like Rasheed Rice, We'll get man. into it. Wide receiver one? Come on. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Steph Curry makes you believe that you can do anything. I mean, look at me. He has me believing that I can shoot threes when I play pickup basketball. And the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual-density UA flow cushioning and traction, an emergency brake that you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. If you want to move on to the top five now, number five is the Dallas Cowboys. Who could have seen this coming? The Dallas Cowboys, a top five team, or do we have them at five, or do we have Miami at five? We have them at five. We have Dallas okay, at yeah, five. Okay, yeah, I thought I read that. Okay, yes. I think we all share the same concerns about the defense and the, the style that they play with their secondary um, and how it's gotten exposed against yeah, the some of the better passing offenses. Yeah, the man coverage rate. Well, <laughs> whatever it is, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But the offense is super, super legit in Dallas. I feel like the line is great. Tyler Smith, Tyron Smith, you know, Zach Martin are all super high level players. CD is ascended to a new level. And then Dak is playing at an MVP level right now. And if the season ended today, you know, it's, it's probably him with the award. And yeah, they're, I've talked about the per drive stats. They're number one in yards per drive ahead of the Dolphins. They're number two in points per drive ahead of the Dolphins, but behind San Francisco. Um, yeah, it's, I, th I think their offense has passed pretty much every hurdle that has come at them. They, they can drop back and protect and hit shots down the field with an aggressive quarterback and accurate against, quarterback. Against who? Against who? Yeah, they have the Against same everyone. criticism Miami does, is that they haven't beaten anyone good. Yeah, they have the same criticism, yeah. They have not beaten a team with a winning record. They, they have haven't. beaten some 500 teams. They have not beaten a team with they a winning did record. Beat, they did beat Seattle. <laughs> Look, I'm all for Who's calling the Cowboys uh, a bit fraudulent, but... Who has had a good... I, I like the Cowboys, too. I, I think Dak is, has been great this year, but I, I also think that... They're, they're, they, they've not gone up against some stacked defenses or whatever. Right now, they stand in the same boat about Miami, where it's like they the offense has not looked as strong against good defense. You know, they played a couple of good defenses, and the offense did not look as good. Yes, and I, I think if this was I think if this was a team that we didn't already like, we'd have that concern. We would have that concern. I will. I, I think that the Giants' defense isn't so bad. I mean, it's not great or anything, but they hung forty nine on. If if this if this was the Bills, we'd be talking about. Well, the quarterback's an MVP, <laughs> and CD's great. But what do they have weapon wise outside of that? that we'd no, be saying that for sure. Nah, you are you well, the, are right there. That like it's the, like Gallup. Gallup, Gallup, Gallup is a complete Brandon non Cooks. factor. These are, they, Brandon Cooks. You're right. Is they, Brandon Cooks is basically Gabe Davis, but a different in a different form. <laughs> okay, but but they're doing what they're supposed to do, right? Like, yes, they're not playing good defenses or great defenses, but they're putting up more points than anybody else. Like the Giants aren't a bad defense this year. Like they're they're about average. Their pass rush, like Thibodeau, is on pace for a bunch of sacks. Lawrence is a monster. Banks has had a good rookie season. Like Okereke is broken out. It, it hasn't been that bad. And they put 40 on them and then 49. And the Rams have been an average defense. They put 43 on the Rams. Yeah. And then the Patriots 
they're they're the sixth ranked defense in the league in yards per drive. They're ninth in points per drive. The Cowboys put 38 on those guys. They put 30 on the Jets. How many, how many of these touchdowns are because of defense putting them in great field positions? The question. I don't I'm know, have probably away. not because the because the defense of- because the defense isn't what's good about this team. It's the offense. Yeah, but the defense does force a lot of turnovers. You have Micah Parsons. You have Deron Bland leading the breaking the all time pick six record. No, I I don't know how many of these. I agree with you, Theo. But like that, it's definitely valid to point out that like their defense has had some really five shutdown games. Five touchdowns are from Bland, but the offense like is good in and of itself. Like the stats that don't care about picks from the like not just points but like picks from the defense doesn't affect the epa or points per drive or anything like that the cowboys are still they're, yeah, they're top tops. three in all yeah, they are at every, every stat i would say like that doesn't take bland pick sixes into oh, wait, where, where are your concerns about the defense then my concerns about I, the I, defense I, okay, are I like the offense yeah my concerns about the defense is the, the fact that they play a lot of man coverage and you can pick on Bland. It's kind of risky to pick on Bland, but like if you have a good wide receiver, he could allow 200 yards. And I think Gilmore can't quite move the same as he did, and he's in a lot of man coverage too. And then in terms of, you know, there are a lot. I think they're a lot like the Eagles, where I like their pass rush, but everything behind that, you know, I think they struggle to deal with gap scheme. Like when guys pull or when there's motion and the gaps are changing. Um, their linebacking core isn't great at dealing with that kind of stuff. And yeah, then the man coverage, they get, they get beaten up and that that's my concern with the defense. My concern with the offense is like, if someone has just, a, if some corner has an amazing game on CD, like an amazing game, like can I mean, Cooks you wouldn't really be a good you enough could just, second You could option? just bracket CD and then just force them. Like, to why didn't them? teams think of this, man? <laughs> They probably do. You just <laughs> CD's just they, that. CD probably just catches it anyway, <laughs> right? Just like that good or Dak um, or my like my, cons- my other the concern game. with the offense is that they're not that great running the ball. Like they, no, they're not that like like you get down to goal to go situation or like short yardage, and you're not really you're not going to hand it off to Pollard and trust him to get in between the tackles and pick up that yard. Yeah, I don't totally love Bia- uh, Biazdez. How do you pronounce their center's don't, name? Don't like, ask me. <laughs> he's, he hasn't been the, the greatest. Um, Terrence Steele like, isn't at the same level as the other guys. Like Pollard, I think they've had a bit of difficulty finding their identity in terms of like how do they want, how much workload do they want their backs to have because last year Pollard was super limited and now he's their lead back. So it's just not as much as their identity, yeah. but you know, that's the same with the, the chiefs. And I think the, the dolphins can get away with from it at times. Like Maybe, the Eagles but... certainly can get away with from it. The bills can get yeah. away from it. The Texans have struggled running the ball, even though it's part of their identity and the Jaguars can't do it. And you know, it's a pretty common I, I, problem. I would take, I would take the Dolphins. I would take the Dolphins' run game over Dallas's pretty easily, just because of the talent that they have there and the speed they can win on the edge. But they can also have some big negative plays on the edge too. I would maybe take. Nah, I don't know if I would take Kansas City. I don't know. I wouldn't take Kansas City's run game over. I mean, it's not <laughs> over Dallas's. Yeah, it's it's nothing to call home about. But they, Pacheco, they want to drop back. Pacheco, Pacheco at least runs with some force into the ground. Pollard just doesn't run the same way. Pollard's pretty good, though. I he mean, is, he I, is t- I like Pollard more than Pacheco, I think. As, as a total back, yeah, but I'm just talking like between the tackles, I might take Pacheco. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I, I don't have a super strong shake Pollard versus Pacheco. And, and that how much does that really move? And how much does that move the needle as far as power ranking those teams? I don't know, but I think Dallas has a better offense than than even Kansas City. I like I I think their offense is legitimately like pretty, Fair enough. pretty special Fair this enough. year. I, this is all to say I had him at six. So I'm not exactly low yeah, on and Dallas. I, th- I think I had him at five. So I had them at three. 
Mm, so you... A little lower on them than you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't like Who their do we defense, have <laughs> I don't know. I I think this is and this is. Uh... We'll get into it, but who do we have next? Next, next we up have is the Miami, Miami. Dolphins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I see the vision with them. Like you said, the defense is getting better, and offensively we know what they're capable of. Tua, you know, has is, is been pretty strong this year, all things considered. There's some concerns with him, but he's an above-average quarterback, I think. Mm -hmm. And and the weapons are, are just completely freaky. And then on the defensive side of the ball, yeah, they've rounded out. Uh, they're nine and three. They haven't. They haven't beaten a team with a winning record. They probably will. It's a pretty small sample size, just three games. And I do have some concerns about whether or not, like, if you aren't, can Miami run the ball when they're not fooling people? Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's one of my concerns about them. Uh, they, they granted they get away from it pretty quickly if that's what it comes down to. But um, yeah, yeah. I think this is a pretty fair. I had them at five, I think. Yeah, I had them at four, and, and the winning teams think will follow them, but it's something that could so, the narrative could so easily shift extremely quickly. Like, I think when you stack up their roster with Hill and, and Waddle and Ramsey and Chubb and Wilkins and Sealer and Tua and, and Armstead, and, like, it it gets pretty scary. Like there's no reason that their collection of talent is, it is like way worse than Jacksonville's collection of talent. And Jacksonville has beaten a winning team. You know, it's like the, the dolphins very easily could put that behind them the same way. Like, Oh, you know, Jokic never won a ring. And then he does it. Like it, it never right. happens until it does. And then sometimes like if, if you're dealing with a clearly talented team, it could it could really switch and they could actually like go on a run. I, I think that that's all on the table for Miami, but they haven't shown it yet. I do have, and I think part of the reason that that we've their run game is like super good in all these in all these categories, but like against the Chiefs, it kind of went away, and that's kind of the thing that concerns me up with them is like they they do kind of become one-dimensional against these good teams and when guys was get the physical chiefs with... game was the chiefs game the one where they did not run the ball at all in the first half and then it they ran the like ball that. really well in the second half and they almost won was that that mm -hmm. game that that is what happened and they obviously like obviously the stuff to Tyreek is is always going to be pretty good and obviously the stuff to Waddle is always going to be pretty good and like when you get in motion it's tough to defend but when it's only the one thing that is what has gotten them in trouble against these winning teams to me is like that that if they could really just have a dominant performance on the ground I feel like they would not lose <laughs> against anybody um yeah and use kind of the like when I think about how the 49ers won in the playoffs with Garoppolo, like there were games where Garoppolo only threw it nine times. And that's kind of what's missing with Miami, that balance that yeah. Shanahan's teams have had. Um, they've got all the the great stuff with the drift routes over the middle and to his Ben money and, and all of that. But like against the Eagles, Brock played fine. But when they needed to grind it out, like they gave it to McCaffrey and ran it behind Kittle and Trent Williams. And like, that's really what, what salted the game away for them. Um, and they, they peppered underneath, you know, they didn't go at the Eagles like deep at all. And like with the Dolphins, they still kind of have to. So that, that's what I think gets them in trouble is that they are a bit one dimensional, but that one, but so is the, the chiefs, you know, it's like, they're kind of like the Mahomes you know, Mahomes. go play make mode is like kind of the only answer that they have and not the only answer that they have, but this year it, it kind of has been, it feels like. So I don't know if you get yeah. that in a defense playing well together, like it, it might be enough. Yeah. They have the ability to just destroy you with just superstars, but the, it, yeah, it's just, can you find, the balance yeah I, I don't think there's another word to put i was trying to find another word but theo that's that's the right one <laughs> yeah yeah but 
I love the def. I really do. Even though Jalen Phillips being hurt sucks, but there's a lot yeah. of players that I really appreciate. Ramsey is is a top corner. I think that he got kind of underrated last year when when everybody you know hated on him because he got burned a couple of times. That's just the way it goes with corner. I still thought he looked fine. Like right. Chubb has kind of come along. The farther we have gotten removed from that trade. Holland, David Long is a top linebacker in the league. I think Ogba hasn't been terrible since filling in for Phillips, which has been big. I don't know. Like that, that defense is like, it could come down. It could, I think they could have like a Bengals type of run where like Tua and the offense get so much hype because, you know, they're scoring all these points. They're so good in the regular season. Like they're such superstars. I could see the Dolphins having like a Bengals type of run where it's actually the defense that's doing a great job and the offense kind of str- maybe doesn't struggle but doesn't replicate their regular season numbers. I feel like that's kind of been the case mm. with Burrow in the playoffs. Like Lou is, it's kind of Lou's time. I, I think the Dolphins could do a similar thing where it's like the offense gets all the hype, but the defense is the deeper, like more well-rounded. And then they lose in the Super Bowl because their offensive line isn't good enough, right? (laughs) You see, like it could very easily happen. Yeah. And we, what did we say last episode? Niners, Dolphins is looking more and more probable. Well, the Dolphins aren't our top team in the AFC, but before we get into that, the number three team is Philadelphia. And Theo, you're the one that had the Eagles a little bit lower then the rest I had them of at five, and, and then Matt you had, had them at, at three. four, Matt, and then you had them at three. Matt, you, had you were the four. highest, Bladen. Oh, I thought Matt and I both had them at three. Nope. Oh, okay. Just you, Bladen. Why, why are you still a, an Eagles top three believer? Well, you know, I know they got blown out uh, by the 49ers, and I know you, you like the pass rush, but maybe the rest of the defense isn't great. Um, but I could also say those things about your third place Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, it, I, I think I'm not going to read too much into that Niners game. Now they have concerns. Like we said, everything behind the defensive line is, is rough. And they did not have a very good game against the 49ers defense. But outside of that, the offense has been really strong for them. Outside of that, they've been fantastic running the ball. Outside of that, Hertz has played pretty good and the offense has pretty great weapons it ranks among the top offenses in the nfl i like the 49ers to come out of the nfc but i'm not gonna get too too low on them and i think that everybody's been a little bit too low on them this year because the expect they're not quite meeting expectations which granted are don't lose a game blow out everybody by 20 so on and so on and they just haven't quite done that yeah, they're, they're still, on paper, perhaps the top team in the entire league at, ahead of the 49ers. I think their line is the best in the league, like way better than the 49ers line, in my opinion. Like their top two receivers are probably even better than the 49ers top two receivers. You know, quarterbacks, I think each have their flaws, but, you know, Hertz might be even more valuable than Purdy is. On defense, like the line for both teams are extremely elite. I I, I think that f- on paper, the, the 49ers match up with, or the Eagles match up with anybody. They do. But they've just shown a couple cracks here recently that I'm, I'm not just going to put them at number two or number one, considering, you know, what they look like on paper right now. I think they have need to fix their secondary. Um whether the return of Zach Cunningham and the addition of Shaq Leonard and cutting Ellis from the team, like makes their linebackers better. (laughs) I don't know. I don't think they'll have good linebackers. I'll, I guess we'll see if it makes it better than what we saw against the 49ers, but it, that's been pretty bad. Their nickel spot with, you know, Maddox getting injured and now Roby in like that underneath core of the defense has just been such a liability that has been picked on this year and then their play caller like they have a g- efficient running game but it needs to be a bigger part of their identity i feel like you can't go an entire 49ers game without a single successful run to your backs like yeah i understand that you know swift isn't necessarily a workhorse and someone who you know you want more in the open field probably than getting a ton of carries like 
I, I understand that still. You, you've got to find a way, whether it be get Penny more involved if you want someone who's like consistent between the tackles. Like Bring I know the Rashad that, Penny. <laughs> look, the guy yeah, averages yeah. like six yards a carry through his career. I, if yeah. you don't think he can run the ball between the tackles, I don't know what to tell you. Like I get that he can't pass protect, but you've got to find something to to bring you know it's been the key to this episode like the balance back because right now it's like Hertz drops back and scrambles and tries to find AJ and Devante and it's it it they are super good like they're more talented than everybody else and that's why they can have these problems and be 10 and 2 um right but I'm not saying they can't figure some things out but they, they need to figure things out and I think I had them at five because I think Baltimore Dallas Miami and San Francisco are just they're they're more maximized right now they're playing better football and I think like if they met the Eagles the way the Eagles are playing right now well like, Dallas is going to meet to the Eagles this different. weekend so we'll see but I don't know if it's fair to say that Dallas is better than Philly I I, I could maybe understand Miami um but I mean, Philly's already beaten Dallas relatively recently. They have. And, and, the, and the roster hasn't, like, depreciated. I mean, the only thing you're really worried about is their offensive play calling in the center of their defense. But this isn't the 49ers. They, this isn't a team that's going to beat you that way. They're going to try and beat you the same way that the Eagles are going to try and beat them, which is let's just get our star. Cause again, like we said, like Gallup is a complete non-factor. They don't really run the ball between the tackles that well. And it's like, what, what is the, I mean, unless you're really going to just abuse CD in the middle of the field, which maybe that is the game plan. You're right. You're right. I mean, they, that, there's a lot to suggest that, the Eagles are better than the they were better than the Cowboys last year. They're ahead of them in the division and they beat them. I just I just think the Eagles have got to stop getting off to these slow starts. Like they there's just something about them that feels a little disappointing. Like I understand <laughs> that they're ten and they're the, they have the best record in the league. How could they possibly d- be disappointed? I, it just feels a I little see. bit like they're they're fucking around a little bit more than the Cowboys <laughs> are. And if they're not I, careful, I they're see, gonna get. They're I gonna see, get beat. They're gonna find out. I see your your Eagles vibe check, and I raise you a Cowboys curse. <laughs> it's not the playoffs Cursed. yet, man. It's not the playoffs yeah, yet. It's getting close though. Yeah, that's and what this we're game talking will, about. This game will about the playoffs. Playoff the only seeding. thing that matters. <laughs> well, the Dallas is gonna win this. Season. Dallas is gonna win this game. How about that? Yeah. Are you willing they're to finally, lock it, Theo? They're favored by three and a half. They are, yeah. So, I, what what controversial take am I pushing here? The the Cowboys are favored. I'm not saying it's controversial. I just, I mean, you talk about roster for roster, dog. Give me Philly. I, I just, I I agree with that. I think when I look at Philly and I look at the Cowboys, I, I told you my process at the beginning. I looked at the rosters and I said, who has more good players? Philly has more good players than Dallas does. Yeah. But when you look at the results on the field, like. Philly hasn't had I, I talked earlier about how you know Dallas put 40 on the Giants Dallas put 48 on the Giants they put 40 yeah. on the Patriots they like the Eagles haven't quite clicked like that much this year and I think that that's fair Dallas yeah. you know they click they click against bad teams a lot and against the good teams they haven't you know they haven't beat the 49ers and Eagles but I don't know the Eagles I don't know. Maybe that's just all to say the Eagles are better, but I, I I think Dallas is playing better better ball right now. That's all I can. Well, we'll see when we get to the to locks. If if you're if you're bold enough to lock the, Cowboys. I don't know if I'm bold enough to lock <laughs> Dallas, but I do think that they're playing better football at the moment. Uh, I I can't hate on that too much. If we're gonna move into the top two teams, our number one team in the AFC. Is Which the, was a consensus for all of us. Yeah, the top to two the teams were two consensus. List, yes. Uh, number Baltimore one team in the AFC two. is Baltimore Ravens. Which, I mean, the only thing you're really concerned with that, I guess, is the receivers. Because it's... I get concerned a bit about the line. Um, yeah. I don't think that Ronnie Stanley has been good. 
And the receivers, they're all good, but none of them are quite great. Like, like you're muted, Matt. I'm sure he's spitting. You're muted. I'm muted to sniffle. That's my fault. <laughs> um, I'm leaving that in the episode, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't think any of them are, are like super big play guys, like superstar game changers. They're better than they have been before, where mm -hmm. nobody is like an extreme negative. And Zay Flowers is like, I think going to become one of those guys, but he's still a rookie. Right. Um, but it, it just comes down to their defense being so, 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 so good. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, with the quarterback and Lamar Jackson. and, and with, this It's like you got the elite defense and the quarterback. It's like, man, how many teams got that? And I feel like their wide receiving core has a lot of potential, but right now it's still working through some things. Like Zay Flowers is clearly electric, but he hasn't been super consistent down the field. I, I think even going back to the last game they played versus the Chargers, who don't have the greatest defense, like it was likely in Zay that they were really leaning on to carry them in the passing attack. And it just didn't feel like they were quite ready to pay that trust off with like an insane degree of success quite yet. That's not to say that I don't like them or I do like Zay and, and likely a lot. It's just they're young. They're young. And, you know, Bateman hasn't quite, I think he's got a lot of potential, but he's never quite lived up to it. You know, Odell's solid, but he's old and doesn't quite have the juice that he used to have, and he can get banged up. But come the playoffs, I could totally see a world where just one of those guys gets hot for like a three-game stretch or clicks for like a, a three- or four-game stretch, right? Like I remember a couple of years ago when Sammy Watkins was just – he was that guy for <laughs> – I think it was the Chiefs in the playoffs for just one playoff run. And they've got a lot of guys who are good enough – to definitely do that. They might have one or two guys like be able to step up. So even though right now I'm a little bit like, okay, they don't have a, they, like an AJ Brown and Devonte Smith. They don't have a CD. They don't have a Hill. They don't have a Kelsey, but maybe they could get Mark Andrews back for the playoffs. And they have a lot of guys who could break out in a big way, like relatively quickly, even though it hasn't happened yet. And then they have Lamar in a great defense. And I think their defense is, is elite they don't have maybe the super duper like hall of fame star but they've got a lot of great players yeah. like roquan they're, and, they're and kyle and, they're, to me they're the better version of the kansas city chiefs right now yeah they're they're a little bit built like that where you've got the great quarterback maybe questionable tackle play and wide receiver play and then a great defense but at, Lamar ain't Mahomes, but yeah, everything Lamar's else is kind of turned up. But Lamar also can steal a gap, which Mahomes can't necessarily. I mean, Mahomes I, can do. Their defense is better, and their wide receivers aren't as much as uh, yeah. of a negative. Yep. Yeah. So I've I've got the, them ahead of the Chiefs for that reason. I think that, and and they're just kind of wonky schematically. I think that they're just there's no one else that quite plays like them or and i think that could be something that you know comes into play during these playoffs where it's like they're just kind of running something that it's tough to game plan for i feel like and mike mcdonald is going to be a head coach and you know who knows what he'll cook up for these playoffs i i just like the vibes there a lot right now even though even though andrews is hurt like they they're a very very formidable unit that i think they've got kind of what the 49ers have where they've got a talent gap you know, they've got a bunch of great players, even though maybe they don't have a lot of Hall of Fame caliber players yeah. outside of Lamar. Both of some these guys, top two teams, we have <laughs> they just have to stay healthy come playoff time. That's both of yeah. their kryptonites is we get to playoff time and it's like, well, if, maybe if Lamar didn't have like a, a bum foot or like some it's always something with them um or like yeah. someone gets sick but <laughs> lamar you mean, what do you mean yeah. someone lamar is the lamar. only one who consistently like gets sick every year <laughs> lamar's got the the matthew spawn our immune system he does and it's it's his, his biggest <laughs> deficiency there's no question about that it is but then the so they're number two yes and then the the san francisco 49ers are are number one I was thinking about this earlier. Who? How many Hall of Famers do you think are in San Francisco right now? Trent Williams, 
Mm-hmm. Frock party. <laughs> hey, man. If Eli can get in, you know, Purdy can get two rings with all the Hall of Famers we'll around see. him. We'll see. Um, so Trent Williams, Fred Warner. Um, Kittle's got a shot. Kittle's, yeah. Kittle's got Kittle's a shot. Got a... I think McCaffrey's got a very good shot. Bosa has a shot. That's five. Mm-hmm. I think Shanahan himself is a Hall of Famer. Probably. Fair enough. I mean, so that's, yeah, I'd that's say. six people in the building. That's yeah, more than that's I, I, more than like most of the NFL, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I, I just feel like there's just this team has to get a ring. I, I can't imagine sitting here and thinking back like, wow, Debo, Ayuk, <laughs> Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle. Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, Kyle Shanahan were all on the same team, and that team never got a ring. Even though they've yep. blown out my third-ranked team, they've blown out my fifth-ranked team. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they they've ran through like the entire top ten, <laughs> but they're gonna they're gonna lose in the NFC Championship, right? Yeah. Well, if Purdy is healthy. I think that yeah. they will win in the NFC Championship game. I think uh, I, I just don't think there's a lot of teams with any answers for them. I people ask like, how do you defend it? Like, how do you, how do you defend? I don't know. <laughs> how do you defend when Bosch, LeBron, and Dwayne Wade were all on the same team? You know, it's like kind of hard to do. There's not you you need a defense that has five hall of famers on it is what you need like that's how you do it but no one has that so i i don't know how you how you do it we need you don't we need we need the browns to (laughs) to make the super bowl so their defense can yeah you would need the browns defense with garrett and and denzel ward fully healthy and also hurt mccaffrey and debo in that was that the game that those two got hurt the oblique injury and debo so it's like you need to hurt them and you also need to have one of the best defenses in recent memory. And then maybe you can have a game-winning field goal at the end. Hey. Or I guess you're Brian Flores. Maybe it just blitz the, the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think about, like, what is the path? Because I'm like, well, outside of Trent Williams, the offensive line isn't that good. So in theory, if you could get pressure and get hands on the receivers to just completely throw off all of their timing, then maybe you can slow down the offense. And then if you have an offense that is high, like high powered enough to like completely, yeah. like you would have to, you have to find a way to like, problem is the Eagles had kind of had that. Like the they, Eagles, they went right, bare the front have that, but they went bare front with Carter and sweat and Reddick and, you know, Cox and Jordan Davis and, they rushed five a lot, but, you know, they may have had the one-on-one battle wins for four of the five positions, but it didn't matter because their secondary could hold up. And right. I just don't know what team has the combination of secondary and front front seven to, to do that kind of thing. Well, maybe Baltimore can handle it. Maybe Baltimore can handle it. Again, I, I really think Miami, like their defense yeah. is kind of this the secret to their success because they've got a lot of talent on on both ends there. And I think at the beginning of the year, like completely changing your terminology and philosoph- like philosophy on defense can be tough, and that's what they did. But like nowadays, I, I think their defense is pretty elite. Um, it's, it's not many teams, and both of those guys are in the AFC. Yeah. No yeah. one in the NFC has Rough that combination Tiger. right now. No. So. Yeah, that's the, the top. 10. The Vikings did it, but their their scheme. No one else runs what they run. So it's like I. Yeah, the Niners did Become drop Brian Flores three for straight week? after Jim Schwartz broke them. As in Hurt McCaffrey and Debo. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, they dropped a game to Cleveland, Minnesota, and Cincinnati. Yes, they did. Study up. Yeah. If <laughs> study up, I I guess like those t- 
teams. Those are three of the best defensive coordinators yeah, like I in the mean. game. Flores, Flores, <laughs> Schwartz, Schwartz, and, Schwartz, and, and Luan Arumo. I mean, definitely come playoff time, I'll have to rewatch those games because those yeah, are three guys will... with completely different philosophy, like completely different philosophies, but very, those are, very Those good are the at what only times all year that they've been held to under third. No, under, uh, they got held to under 30 against Tampa, but under 20 it's the only it's time all team to do that to them didn't pretty have a perfect passer rating in that game though maybe which, they which one everybody. the bucks game maybe they scored 20 they won 27 to 14 Purdy had yes perfect passer rating 158 points okay so congratulations bucks you held Purdy, <laughs> you held them under 30 but Purdy went 21 of 25 for 333 yards three touchdowns and no picks yeah yeah so they've been held under 30 four times held under 23 times i would watch that three game stretch like every night before i go to bed and that's yeah, you, and you maybe you'll have figure to become it out. intimately familiar with <laughs> what happened during those three games and a lot of things happened but because it's three completely different coordinators but right right the defensive coordinator watching the film will probably not be as good as the three that did that too it'll be joe barry watching as the seventh <laughs> seed facing the two again maybe not maybe, gonna, <laughs> maybe the ravens the ravens have not gonna have the same success i think the ravens have the guy could happen it could, it could happen, I, but the fact that the fact that we're even like you have to go and do all this work just to figure out how to possibly beat the 49ers, I think says a lot. You so, have to be you have to be a pretty elite. You, you do have to be pretty elite. You do, but that's our top ten. Um, we'll give it one more one more rundown. So, in posterity, and I'm sure we'll put a graphic or tweet this out or something. Yeah. But. Number 10, Jacksonville. Number 9, Houston. Number 8, Buffalo. Number 7, Detroit. Number 6, Kansas City. Number 5, Dallas. 4, Miami. 3, Philadelphia. 2, Baltimore. 1, San Francisco. And that are the top. Those are the definitive top 10 teams in the league. I think it's a pretty good list. I can't imagine too many people have uh, too big oh, an issue with that. Dog, have you... <laughs> Come on, you know this game. Who is going to complain? <laughs> Viking fans are you not going this, to be like, how do you, you leave know, us you out? You know this game. Like, you're like, nah, bro, I, there's no way. But You're right. <laughs> you're right. Someone's going to get mad. Someone always gets mad. But the only thing we have left let's, is the stay hot locks. So let's hop into those. Theo, who are the stay hot locks? Let's do it. By? These... Stay Hot Locks are presented by Prize Picks. Yes. And the way we pick this is a draft format. We each select all the teams that we think are going to win. And however many we pick, if they are right, then we get that amount of points, if that yeah. makes sense. It's basically a little parlay. Basically. Basically. But recapping last week's Stay Hot Locks, Matt, you locked the Chargers and the Bucks, and the Bucks lock was a challenge pick to Theo locking the Panthers, and Theo was <laughs> trying to get the, the interim bid, which it's not a perfect success rate, but it's pretty good. So I don't, I don't hate you for making that pick. Pa but Panthers did put up a, a better fight than they do most weeks. But yeah, it, it was close. Like It wasn't, it wasn't like totally Hang insane. But the Bucks did end up winning, and that means Matt now has 14 two. points after only having to lock two teams because when you challenge someone's pick, you get double points if it wins. So Matt has 14. Theo, you locked the Falcons, the Panthers, and the Chiefs. Didn't hit. You have six. And I locked the Dolphins and the Jaguars. Trevor got hurt in the Jags game. Jags took an L came down to the wire but i am stuck at 11 matt has a fairly commanding lead here in week 14 and you will have your choice of selection matt do you want the first pick second pick or the turn i think i want the turn fair enough so 
I guess I will take the first pick. And with the first pick in the week 14, stay hot locks, I will take the team we just talked about, the 49ers over Seattle Seahawks. Very fair. Very fair. Seahawks are, you know, pretty decent team to lock against. They're, the they're pretty, they're pretty decent. The number one team. Come on. Yeah. Last time these two teams I, played didn't go so hot. I will lock the 49ers versus the Titans. Or not the 49ers. <laughs> the Titans. I was like, what? I mean, fair enough, but. The Dolphins over the Titans. The Titans yeah. are the type of defense the Dolphins could hang 70 on especially without Jeffrey Simmons. It, it is very, very over for, for Tennessee's defense. You don't trust Will Levis to, to go band for band? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't trust yeah. Will Levis or the line or the receivers or the secondary or the front seven to Fair enough. do anything against any aspect of the Dolphins, really. Very fair. Very fair. I have the turn. I will take two teams. I'm going to take the Lions over the Bears. Lions are, the Bears are one of the worst teams. And then I will take the Saints over the Panthers. The Panthers are the worst team. <laughs> you will pay for overestimating. The, the Lions defense is going to sell them this game. We'll see. I'm not going to challenge the lock, though. <laughs> Why not? What was well, the you... second team you picked, Matt? The Saints. Over the Panthers. Over the Panthers. So it's me again, mm -hmm. and I will select. I'm going to select the Texans over the uh, Jets in Zach Wilson's <laughs> return. We didn't talk about Zach Wilson not wanting to come back and and start. Do you think mm -hmm. that's a a move that endears him to you, or do you think he should shut up and play? I don't care one way or the other. I mean, at the end of the season, he may never see an NFL field again. So <laughs> there's some truth. Be to grateful, that. I guess. I don't know. I think it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> that he was like, "Man, you benched me, and now you're crawling back." No, like turning them down. I, I wish I could be there for that conversation when he was like, "Ah, oh, man, I gotta be honest with you, coach." I'm not really feeling like going into the game. Like that must just be what what do you what do you mean by that, Zach? <laughs> I think it's funny. I don't really care either way. Um, well, someone would have a hot see. take about it. I don't have a hot take about it. I don't either. I think so I have the turn here and I think I will take two teams, just not entirely sure which two, because I have three teams that I'm kind of looking at here. I know I'm going to take the Steelers over the Patriots. Uh, the Steel or the Patriots are almost as bad as the Panthers, if not as bad, if not worse. Uh, Steelers are a fraudulent seven and five, but they're you know still a good defense. They've got some guys on offense that can make plays, so I'll pick them. And then, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. But, because I, Theo... Because you want to lock the Browns. No, I'm not going to lock the Browns. I'm not going to no. lock the Browns. They're playing Jacksonville. Jacksonville's a good team. I don't lock the Browns against I feel like teams. you've. I feel like you've locked the Browns no. against. No, I don't. Better. I don't think I have. If if I have locked the Browns against a better team, someone please let me know. I am looking at uh, Baltimore as one, and then I'm That's looking fair. at Green Bay as the other. Versus the Giants? Yeah. Green Bay's been hot lately. That's what is, is Tommy DeVito starting again this week? He's starting the rest of the year. Yeah, dog. Like, <laughs> how much is... I, I think Tommy DeVito is a f more reasonable guy to lock against than Stafford. Even is Stafford even yeah, healthy? Playing. He played really well last week. I can never was, keep you, track. What do you mean is Stafford healthy? They played the Browns last week. Yeah, and he, he cooked you. Yeah, he did. You saw us. that. <laughs> I must have blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Because I tweeted, I was like, "Who do you Pook. think?" I actually Pook in the Who do you think threw that seventy-yard 
shot up the seam Stop. to uh Stop. I don't want to. I don't want to. wasn't wanna Stetson Bennett. <laughs> it was uh, Brett Ripien, I guess. <laughs> no. He's, he's in, not he's on the team Seattle. anymore. No, he's... <laughs> Um, I'll take yeah, I'll take the Packers over the Giants. I I'm gonna lock a team that no one has mentioned yet. I'm gonna lock the Vikings over Tommy DeVito and the the Raiders. Not Tommy. Oh my God, I'm so bad with the names. <laughs> Aiden O'Connell. Aiden Holy O'Connell. Cow. Aiden. Was, that's a reasonable that's lock. A yeah. I'll be out. So it's me again. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to go for another one, I've got a lot of ground to make up, fellas. I wouldn't hate you for taking another guy, another team. I feel okay. I've already picked three. So, fair enough. You're going to be done? I'll be done. Yeah. All right. I will also be done. I won't take the risk. I feel pretty good about my locks this week. I lock that I will hit the locks. Theo's locking Can I double himself? my point? Can Theo's I double the point? himself. <laughs> I'm going to win against not winning this week. This week I'm going to... What is it? The Dolphins, the Vikings, and... The Texans. Did I take the Texans over the Jets? There is no way that I lose this week. Bet all the money you have on it then. I will. Okay. I will bet all the money that I have. Theo's, and sell some Theo's of my getting, possessions Theo's to make more evict- money. Theo's getting evicted next week. This is tough, man. No, I'm, I'm actually getting an apartment that's twice as good. Because Oh, he's going to make twice the money. I will be. By this time next week, my net worth will double because of that parlay. There is no way it doesn't hit. There, no chance. All right, man. I, for your sake... I hope so, because, again, you've got some serious ground to make up. But those are the Stay Hot locks. Just to quickly recap, Matt is at 14 points. He's locking the Lions and the Saints. Theo is at six points. He's locking the Dolphins, the Texans, and the Vikings. And then I am at 11 points. I'm locking the 49ers, the Steelers, and the Packers. Those are the Stay Hot locks. And that concludes another episode of Stay Hot. Real quick, before we get out, what are you guys' thoughts on my new desk chair? From looks, the one percent of it I can see, it looks <laughs> the well, nor, looks I've been comfy. sitting. I've been sit. I've been sitting in a stool for every episode since I've moved into my house, and I couldn't do that. It, it was better than that. It's it's been killing me. So I finally caved and got a chair. Um. And I put it together right before the episode, but there's one screw that like won't go in all the way. So I'm just hoping it's not like critical. Why don't you just go fix it? Oh, be- like it literally won't go any further. Like my, I'm using okay. like a, okay. a drill and it won't go in it any, any further. Well, so let's just hope it doesn't like collapse on me. Let's pray. But thank you all so much for tuning in. And until next time, we're going to be back to, of course, recap week 14. Thank you all for tuning in. And we will catch you on the flippity flop.